we gather to sing all his praises we gather to worship the king we gather to hear of his precious love his grace into all lives he Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're glad we're here for worship today, uh, and glad we've already worshipped here in our fellowship, our family. We're glad if you're join that you've joined us. We're going to look at Mark chapter fourteen today. Mark chapter fourteen, verses three to nine. We'd love you to find that, as we've said it before. Find that in your scripture, and look at it. The Word of God with us. If you don't have that, have maybe a uh, tablet or something there that you could look at and follow along, but we want to read this together in Mark chapter 14. One of the, one of the very familiar passages uh, of Scripture uh, when we're dealing with sacrifice, when we're looking at the picture of that ultimate sacrifice. We, we see a story here in the later days of, of, of Christ's life on earth uh, as they were preparing for those last days. And uh, leading up to the, 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 the Jerusalem time and moving up to the Lord Last Supper, and of course the crucifixion where Jesus gave his life for us and that wonderful sacrifice. But this was a picture here of a preparation for that, and it's anointing. And so when we look at that, we want to see this, and it gives in the very first uh, few words the location of where this occurred, so we won't go back over that again, but that is, it's in Bethany. It's in Bethany, and, and Jesus was anointed here. And we want to see this passage. It's a wonderful passage today, as the Word of God is always wonderful, and it's our book. It's our book for life. But this is a familiar story, but I hope today that God will use me in these few moments to bring some things out that maybe be encouraged as we see uh, this picture that is given in this story. While he was in, this is in verse number three now, Mark chapter 14. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. Made of pure nard, made of pure nard, she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone. Man, wonderful. Our Savior spoke right at the appropriate time. He said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to, before, to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Now, in this moment today, this pastor sharing with you is honoring the last words of that verse as Jesus had said. Because Jesus said, the act that you have seen done here is going to be remembered. And watch what it said. What she has done will also be told in memory of her. And we want to look today at the picture of the alabaster box. So then a little different look at today when we think of this. Breaking your alabaster box. 
breaking your alabaster box. Let's pray today. Father, thank you for the privilege to be here today. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless the moments that we have. Thank you for your scripture today. Thank you for this wonderful story. Lord, use me today to properly share the words you've given to me and laid upon my heart. It'll be an encouragement as we walk this journey and we live in the picture of sacrifice, of giving, of allowing our will to be broken. Lord, I pray that we'll learn these things together today, Lord, as we look into your word and what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. When we look at this thought today, breaking your alabaster box, we could be looking into a lot of situations here of the background of this. I'm going to only summarize that. Jesus now has come to the point here in the last Day, the last days of his earthly ministry here. Matter of fact, in one of the verses, Jesus said, you will always have the poor, but then he mentioned, you will not always have me. There were people there that didn't really still understand that, did they? They didn't really understand what Jesus meant by, I'm going to go away, and I'm going to come back. While I'm going there, I'm going to be preparing a mansion for you. There's a place for you. There were things still to come that when Jesus would say things, even in the Lord's Supper, where he would do in just a matter of time, they didn't understand all of that. They didn't get the full picture of him saying, "You will." Not, but what a lesson that he's teaching here. You will always have the poor and the needy. You won't have me. And she has made this move as a picture of sacrifice. When we look at this verse today, I want you to see some things in this passage. Now, as we read it, we know that it's in Bethany. We know the Passover, all the events that, that had happened. The Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread early in the chapter were only two days away. The chief priests and the teachers were already scheming to arrest Jesus during the festival. Now, do you see kind of what all is going on around? If you've watched some of those events, whether it be reading through the Scripture or where many times when a movie or books try to portray those things, you can see in the shadows almost of the whole point of what's going on around Jesus. They're scheming against him. He's in those later days, and he's sharing those wonderful truths. But you come to this situation that cannot be missed. As he is here in Bethany, he's reclining at the home of Simon the leper. We see the story here that the lady came with an alabaster jar of perfume. And we see by the reading today, she broke the jar and poured out the perfume on his head. Now, we see that this was a pitcher of sacrifice. And in that, as she did that, do you notice immediately that there were people that would go, why would you do that? <laughs> That's expensive. Notice it said expensive. Some of them present were saying one to another, this is a waste. Why, why, why did she do this? Isn't it wonderful then to see those words where Jesus Spoke with authority, but could you imagine he spoke with such support? But no doubt Jesus spoke and said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing. She was here with the picture of anointing him. Now, they didn't understand all of this. And there are customs that go in with this story that we won't develop today. But yet this is a picture as that anointment's going that she's doing this. She has already made the anointing for him, as he said beforehand, to prepare for my burial. Would you not think that that would have went, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Burial? What do you mean burial? 
Well, she in this picture was anointing him for his burial. To complete the work that he would go to the cross and die and go to the grave, and he was dead. But yet in that wonderful resurrection, there was life. She had performed this act, even with the future spiritual picture of the anointing for his burial. And he said that to them in this case. But now in this story, there's a lot of situations we can see. We could take a sermon today and preach on the attitude of those that were standing around. There were a lot of different attitudes, wasn't there? There were some of the attitudes that were waiting. We, Jesus has spoke now. He said, leave her alone. Okay, what is he going to say now? We're on his every word. But prior to him speaking, what did we see that had happened in the story? They simply saw the act and spoke and said, hey, why did she do this? We could have taken this and done this and this and this. Have we ever been there before? We were in that case. We see spiritual. We see things as, as we ought to see through the spiritual side, but we see it through the human eyes, and then we go into the ideas of being critical and whatever may happen, and this should have been this way, this should have been that way. Doesn't that seem to happen not just in the Bible times, but sometimes it happens in the modern times. When, when we're doing the thing that is appropriate at the time, we're doing things in service for the Lord, and you've got the group or you've got the ones or the naysayers around that will wonder, what are they doing? I'm reminded of, of uh, leading worship in a revival uh, about an hour away from here, matter of fact. And I'll never forget the night. It was, a, it was just a small a rural area out. We'd been doing an old week meeting. And the evangelist was there preaching. I got invited to come and do the music. And we were sharing it. And, and, and we had some prayer needs. And it was wonderful. I mean, we were going Sunday night to Friday night. Now, don't anybody fall out, even watching or here. We went Sunday night to Friday night. And we were doing a revival meeting. And they had certain people they were praying for, as many times churches do when you have revival. Now, I know many that would listen and look, man, oh, Man, that was all the way back in the 60s. No, no, it wasn't in the 60s. I'm not that old. This was a little newer than that. But we still put a prayer list together, and they had been praying for some people to reach them. <clears throat> and I'll never forget the idea of God got in that meeting. He, and, 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 and this person was saved, and this person was it. And I've shared a little bit with, with my family here at the church before, with the congregation here. But I remember, I'll never forget this. And all the blessings that God had done, I remember this. We would always have a meal before church, and we would do this, and we had certain ones, and they were praying for a certain individual. And uh, about Thursday night of that meeting, that person came to church, finally came to church, and people were praying and all of this, and this came. Well, no, nothing really happened. And on Friday night, there was a prayer down at the altar, and a person came to Christ that had been prayed for. And, man, people were rejoicing. And if it had only been the one person that had made life change through that week, it's not about the numbers of it, is it? But now I know, hold on to your seats this morning, but this person was praying. I got to go back for a meeting a few weeks later for a little thing they were doing. This person was still coming, being in the church. And I remember these sad words spoken from a longtime member of the church. I said, isn't it wonderful? That person seems to be right on fire. Y'all are coming along the side, as the scripture says, and I'll never forget these sad words. They just hadn't been ruined yet. Preacher, that's just an illustration. No, it's not. Those sad words in any other time are said many times in our churches today. When a person is coming and they're on fire for the Lord, or they're doing the right thing, and they're on the spiritual fire, and they're letting God lead them, and they come and make decisions based on the Word of God and the Spirit leading in them, and someone in the church may go, what's wrong with them? You say, does that really happen? It does. And I don't want to dwell on the negative. I want to dwell on the side of what Jesus then said. But as that person said that to me, I, I was thinking, wait a minute. 
They hadn't been ruined yet. What are you waiting for them? For them to be lukewarm? What you want to do is come along and be thankful they're in the kingdom and let's keep them moving and serving for the Lord. But not being, well, you know, they ain't been ruined yet. That means their fire will go out. No, I, I think we ought to be on fire for the Lord. He's for us. I mean, we're for him. He's for us. Here's what Jesus then spoke and said. Leave her alone. If you're watching today or you're here and you're worshiping with us today, you're serving out there and sometimes you feel like, I know this is what God's wanted me to do, and you're there by God's will, and you do do that, you be faithful to that. Because Jesus today is in, in confirmation to you and to folks that are in our meeting today saying to you, leave them alone. Leave them alone. They're doing it for me. Where we mess up, though, many times, we're not doing it for him. We're doing it for our own glory, or we're doing it for self. This lady gives us a picture. The ministry here gives us a picture that she was completely giving of herself. We see this. The breaking of the alabaster box has been preached in so many different ways. Poems written about it. Songs written about it. What a picture. But today I want you to I want to give you a couple of things. When we bring it to our life, the practical alabaster box, breaking your alabaster box. As a preacher would practice today, breaking our alabaster box. Number one, he expects me to do what I can do. Now notice that. He expects me to do what I can do. Notice there's no measurement to that. God sees that heart and that faithfulness and that spirit. It's not by a measurement. He expects me to do what I can do. Notice what she said, what it said they did. She came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. Now, this is that expensive perfume. We see that it could have been for so much. That's not our point today. She broke the jar. And could you imagine the negative spirit when she, huh, maybe the ones in the negative went, oh, no, well, what are you doing? And some of them present said, indignantly. Now, they didn't just convert. They didn't just have this little, well, I, I wonder what she's doing. So break down the word indignantly. That means they were serious about it. They were griping, in the other words, in Alabama. <laughs> they were griping. What is she doing? This could have been sold, and we could have done it toward this, and the money given to the poor. And what's what they did? They rebuked her harshly. Sometimes in the faith, we're going to be carrying on some things that's God, that are of God, that are for God, that are by God. And you're going to have people that will rebuke you harshly. You follow the example that this lady, this wonderful lady sets for us. And we do what we can do. That's what God asks for us to do. Do what we can do. That's what Jesus noticed. Notice what she said. Why are you bothering him? She's a beautiful, she has done a beautiful thing to me. Still. Still, no word of the money, the expense of that. And we'll see that and we'll continue on a little bit. He expects us to do what we can do or what I can do. We just got to be willing. So many times we hold on. But she gave. And she gave a picture of that full sacrifice. Number two, he spent. He expects me to do it with all. Are you talking about me, preacher? What do you mean with all? This may catch you a little strange today. <clears throat> From my heart, I am nothing. I have nothing that is not because of God. Sometimes we look and we figure, how did that work out in a human perspective? How did that work out in a financial perspective? How did that work? Because God took care of you. 
There's nothing we don't have. There's nothing that we are to be that shouldn't be God's. And we should be in the point as she did to have that situation to give. She gave when it was probably looked at to go. She could have saved that and, you know, maybe sold and did this, whatever. But she gave and gave it all. She expect, and, and, and God expects us to do that with that same spirit. Because all that we have is his. This preacher encourages you to realize that. If we're not careful as I do, we'll categorize and put this and do this and this but and put Jesus into this. And what we'll do if we're not in, and we don't do it intentionally, but we'll do it, we'll put Jesus and the things of God in, into some list. And it ought to be all it ought to be God's first. Now I don't mean about just money. I don't think the preacher's preaching about money. He's not. I'm just talking about our efforts, our ways, and what we do, and our heart, and how our attitudes are. Because we'll put it. I remember years and years ago, and I had one too, and I and I loved it. And it says, "See, remember the scripture: Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to us." And we and I would have a pen that would say, "Jesus first on on the pen." I thought that was a wonderful thing, and that is. But and that's the impression that gives. But in that Jesus first, he is. But let's make sure when we've got that proper spirit, we're not putting him in the end and listing him with two or three other things. Because for the believer, Jesus is all. I'll quote a song, and you know I do that sometimes. But Jesus is all the world to me. And he should be for you. That's not said with boastfulness. But today, I am here because of the grace of God, and you are too. And our prayer is that he is all the world to you. Number three, he expects me to do it now. Verse eight. So she did, so did, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. She did what she could. Jesus said to them, she did it right at this point. She did it at the right time. She did it with this implication today and for that future anointing for burial. If you're looking today and you're struggling with some of these things, about the attitude of, of sacrifice and willingness, and you're struggling with that, of breaking your alabaster box. Remember this. He expects us to do it now. Don't wait. She, this, this wonderful person, lady, performed this as she felt of God leading her to do. God speaking to you today, don't, don't wait. I'll do it a month from now. I'll do it. I'll do it two days from now. But if there's a point of giving or breaking that alabaster box in your life, do it now. This lady came. This lady came before them, presented this, didn't know their reactions, but was there and got ridiculed and rebuked. And Jesus gave her confirmation. You may be feeling it. It may be because it's going to be stepping within family things. It may be stepping within employment things. It may be stepping just in issues you're dealing with life. If I go all the way for God, Jesus went all the way for us. He went all the way for us. He made the ultimate sacrifice. And this life that we're living here, when it comes to that point of giving, let's look at it and know that he wants us to do this now. He expects it. Now, now in closing, let's think of alabaster box in this story. It holds a fragrance. Here, it held a fragrance. Now get this. It held a fragrance of sacrifice. It was expensive. It was broken and poured out upon Jesus' head. Spiritual picture there, but yet the anointing that was to be done 
for the work he was still continuing in to be completed. When we think of our lives, let's look at the fragrance of sacrifice. What is in your alabaster box? Think about it now, probably. Is it ambition? Is it your own plans? Is it unconfessed sin? Is it immorality? Is it a grudge? Is it bitterness? Now, when you break that, you say, well, Brother Mike, in the contest, that was that picture of the all. Trust me, I believe in context. But in the situation today, and you give that, and you're breaking that to show that picture, we could even go further and say, we got to, how about our stubborn wills? How about our love for the world? Maybe love of money. Love of, pre- of love of pleasure. We're going to open that up and be open and give that in sacrifice and come clean and come open. You think about that today. This picture of anointing, as she came and gave, she did what she could for the Lord. You may be here today with us that are in our meeting and our worship time, and you're watching. You're faithful, you're serving, but if there's in that, you're holding on to that. And that's keeping that complete sacrifice. I'm holding on to that little area of over that only you know. But God knows. And for those things, open that box and let that be broken before the Lord. Let him cleanse and guide and lead you in that. When we think of the alabaster box, there's many songs that have been penned, and I want to close with this. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on the still on still she came through the shame that flushed her face, until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard. As she poured out her love for the master from her box of alabaster. So I've come to pour my praise on him, like oil from Mary's alabaster box. So don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. Because you weren't there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt. When he wrapped his love all around me, you don't know the cost and not of this oil in my alabaster box. No one knows what you've been through. I can't forget the way life used to be. Because I was a prisoner to the sin that had had me bound. And I spent my days Pour my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I'd found. Until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch. So now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven, and that's why I love him so much. And there's more words to that. But I love those words right there where it said, that giving. If you're holding on to that, and it may, be in, it may be in salvation, trust Christ. If it's in those sacrifice things of life, give it to him. Break that. Break your alabaster box in praise and anointing to him. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege to share. Lord, I pray that you'll speak today, for, and I pray that decisions will be made for the kingdom and, Lord, in for service for you. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there are those areas that we can look into and look, please break us, Lord, that we might be for you what we should be. We love you today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank y'all.